Good morning, beloved of the Lord. Uh, it's 5.30 in the morning in Georgia. Uh, when I'm on the road, I, uh, I, I tend to work the afternoon and night. In other words, I get up at 2 in the afternoon. Or I get up earlier than that, but then I work until about 2 or 3 in the morning. <clears throat> But for some reason, when I'm at home, I am up early every day. <laughs> it's my natural state to, uh, I love to rise early, and I love to do my Bible study and my Bible reading uh, and devotionals in the morning. There's just something about, uh, so sweet about meeting the Lord uh, in the morning. Uh, we're in Second Corinthians doing our study, and we're in... Uh, Chapter 7, I'm using my brand new Bible here that uh, Joseph Wilbur gave me. And this thing, uh, he sent me a, an email yesterday. I think he only paid $21 for this thing. And I, I absolutely love it. I just love these large, giant print Bibles, especially for uh, when I'm doing these studies. Uh, they're very, very uh, convenient. But we're in uh, chapter uh, 7 of Second Corinthians. Again, uh, this is the second epistle that Paul's written to the Corinthians. Uh, the first one, he pretty much just reamed them out. And this one, uh, they had repented from things. And uh, he's trying to comfort them a little more, I think, in uh, Second Corinthians. Now, I've heard, and I do not know for sure, so I don't teach it, but uh, I've heard that there was uh, three, maybe four epistles written to the Corinthians that were uh, lost in time or something. But uh, you know what? You don't have them. Uh, the Holy Spirit, I believe, put in the canon of Scripture the ones you, he wanted you to have. So uh, we got what we need. All right. Verse 1, chapter 7. Having therefore... Now, I have, a wise man once told me this, and uh, it's true. Every time you come across the word therefore, go back and look what it's there for. He says, Wherefore come out uh, from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves with all from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. One of the great things about the King James Bible is that it defines itself. Let the Bible define itself. Fear of God. One of my, uh, well, my channel's name uh, comes from Proverbs uh, chapter 9 uh, and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Or that could even say the knowledge of his holy is understanding. The knowledge of Jesus is understanding. Now, there is a Bible definition for fear. Fear is a reverence uh, to God, a lot of people say. And that's true. Uh, but there's a real fear, and he's going to define it. He, I mean, this in Proverbs, he actually gives you a definition of what God believes the fear of the Lord is. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, colon. <laughs> uh, that pretty much just uh, gave you a definition of what the fear of the Lord is now, didn't it? A Bible definition, Bible defining itself. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, 
pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Uh, this just came to me. I did not have this plan. So, um, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Now, what does the Lord hate? Uh, chapter 6 of Proverbs says, These six things doth the Lord hate, even seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises, devises uh, wicked imaginations, feet that are swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Boy, this church age right here is so guilty of that last one. Uh, like I've told you several times before, but the, uh, a lot of uh, Christians, or so-called Christians, I hope they're Christians, uh, they base their whole YouTube channel especially on uh, sowing discord amongst the brethren. I don't believe that's of God, and I don't. I really don't want uh, that to happen to me. But that's the definition of fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So he says, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us, uh, semicolon, we have wronged no man, we have corrupted no man, we have defrauded no man. Now that pretty much speaks for itself. He's done nothing against them, uh, but uh, there were some in the Corinthian church that were not accepting the Apostle Paul, evidently. I speak not this to condemn you, colon, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Uh, great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. Paul had a gift. <laughs> I'll tell you, what, well, he had several gifts. But he could be content in tribulation. Remember when uh, him and Silas was in the prison and uh, they were in there singing hymns at midnight. Uh, God got saved because of it. Uh, to be joyful in your trials and tribulations, that is uh, not an easy thing to do. Uh, but would to God that we could do it. Paul, of course, suffered way more than most of us will ever suffer. And he could be joyful in all tribulation. Amen. For when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. But we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. Uh, he's talking about the church there. He's talking about without the outside of the church there were fighting, and then within when were fears. So he was having trouble inside and out of the church. Uh, you start serving the Lord, you're going to find out pretty quick that you're going to get attacked. Uh, Dr. Ruckman, I know a lot of y'all don't like Ruckman. I, I like Ruckman. <laughs> Anyhow, he says that uh, uh, someone told him as a, as a young Christian, and it's uh, proven true, and I've found it to be proven true, is that if you, uh, the, the one that's going to hurt you most in your ministry and all of us got a ministry. You might, uh, 
you might not be a pastor. I'm not a pastor. I'm a truck driver. But uh, we all some, have something to do, something we can do. And if you can do something for the Lord, do it. But he said that uh, the ones that will hurt you the most in the ministry uh, are Christians. And the ones that will attack you the most in uh in your ministry, whatever it is, is more than likely going to be coming from within, not from without. And that's so sad. Nevertheless, uh, uh, verse 6, Nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. Titus was a very important, uh, I guess he was an evangelist or a pastor, uh, Paul even wrote an epistle to him. Yeah, he was a pastor because it, uh, it was telling him how to run the church in uh, in his epistles to Titus. Wow, my fan blowing. And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, and your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. Now, he really came down on them uh, in 1 Corinthians, and they repented. And that's, I think, what pretty much what he's saying, that he rejoiced in that, uh, that they had repented of... Uh, a lot of things. Remember, they were speaking in tongues. And uh, speaking in tongues, let me tell you something. Uh, they were speaking, they were doing it, the Lord's Supper wrong. Uh, that one kid that slept with his mother or his stepmother, whichever the case may be. Uh, and he said, turn him over to the devil. Well, the kid must have repented because he got right with God. And then Paul said, well, that's okay. Then he's uh, been punished enough. And then they were speaking in tongues. And, you know, uh, tongues is a pagan thing, too. Uh, there is a gift of tongues uh, by the Holy Spirit of God. And he will give you, uh, you know, allow you to speak a different language. But if you get into... Uh, any of the dark, dark uh, devil worship and stuff, they always are speaking in tongues. So uh, he was correcting them from all that stuff. They had all these gifts, but they were immature uh, Christians. Uh, the gifts of God are very important, folks, but they're not the most important thing. The most important thing is to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ in all that we do. And he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Don't draw, uh, a lot of times if uh, somebody has a gift of the Lord, uh, they're just boasting on themselves. And that's not, uh, that's not what we're here to do. We're here to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ, not ourselves. Uh, verse 8, for though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. He wrote the first epistle to uh, the Corinthians, and they repented. They got uh, upset about it. and uh, But it was only for a season, only for a short time, he says. Verse 9. Now I rejoice not that uh, ye were made sorry, but that ye sorry to repentance, for ye were made sorry after a godly manner that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. There's a big difference between godly repentance and just repentance, <laughs> okay? Remember Paul, uh, Saul repented, uh, Judas Iscariot repented. Uh, these guys, I think, repented uh, not with a godly sorriness, uh, but they repented uh, because they were caught. They felt bad because 
they were actually caught red-handed. A lot of times a criminal, he'll get caught and he'll uh, cry and uh, you would think it's repentance, but what it is is he's feeling bad that he got caught and now that he has to pay the price for it. He's not feeling bad that he did the crime a lot of times. Uh, a lot of times he might be, but uh, a lot of times they're not. There's a difference between a godly repentance and just a regular repentance. Uh, for uh, Here we go, verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to the, be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. That is a very elegant, way better way of saying what I was just trying to say to you. <laughs> I'll just leave that alone. Uh, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. I have sinned. I can do nothing uh, but accept the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's godly sorrow. Uh, but he said, uh, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Uh, this is the sorry, uh, being sorry like Judas Iscariot was. Remember, he just went out and hung himself. He felt bad about it. Uh, but the man did not get saved. Uh, verse 11, For behold, this self same thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, Yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge in all things. Ye have approved yourself to be clear in this matter. They got right with God, folks. Uh, and all the fear was gone, the indignation, uh, their zeal got better. Everything improved uh, because they got right with God. And we got to get right with God, and you got to stay right with God, and it's a daily thing. Our flesh should die daily. Verse 12, wherefore, you ought to see where it's wherefore, <laughs> he said, though I wrote unto you, I did not, I did it not for the his cause that, had done the wrong. He's talking about the guy, the kid that slept with his mother again. Nor for his cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. Therefore, there's another therefore. Uh, we are we were comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceedingly the more joyed we for the joy of Titus, because the, his spirit was refreshed by you. A lot of times, folks, a pastor of a church or a, a minister uh, can be refreshed by his uh, disciples, and uh, that uh, that's what happened to Titus. He, you know, these guys were wore out. They they went all over. <laughs> They were travelers, and uh, they were attacked at all in from within and from without, the Bible says. And uh, it's good to be around fellow believers. I have a few people that I really love that uh, are Christians, and they just refresh me over and over. Uh, the Holy Spirit, you, uh, he'll lead you to those of like mind. For if I boasted anything uh, to him of you, I am not ashamed, but as uh, we spake all things to you in truth, even so our boasting which I made before Titus is found in truth. And he must have boasted on Titus a little bit. And his inward affection is more abundant toward you whilst he remembereth the obedience of you all, how with fear and trembling ye received him. I rejoice, therefore, that I 
have confidence in you in all things. So they received Titus. Titus came, uh, and he wasn't chewing them out this time. They were comforted by him. But they received him with fear and trembling. Wow, 20 minutes in. All right, folks, God bless you. Uh, read your Bibles. I really enjoyed doing these. And uh, thank you uh, for the those that watched them. I really appreciate it. Uh, Joe, I love my new Bible. I'm going to use that here at the house uh, for these studies. What a wonderful Bible. All right, God bless you. Read your Bibles. Oh, today, see, I'm uh, staying out Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's so I can get a bonus. And so today we're going to have our Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> it's late or an early Christian Christmas dinner. We're going to have some turkey and uh, some ham and stuff. So uh, if you're around Dahlonega, Georgia, come and join us. <laughs> All right, folks, God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. I love you. And God loves you.